Hello everyone, welcome back to No Man's Sky Synthesis. Uh, this is our normal uh, mode run through. Today we're going to talk about bases, where, when, and why. Uh, first of all, I want to say that bases are a highly personal thing. Like, um, different players use bases for different reasons. And there are as many ways to play this game as there are players. So there's no hard and fast rule. But I'm going to show you some of the kinds of bases um, that you would build. And we're going to start right at the very beginning. If you've been following along on the whole series, then you'll know that the first thing that we did after we found our ship was build a small base. And the reason that we did that is because you have to. It's the only way to get the hyperdrive. You have to have a base computer in order to do that. But the base doesn't have to be overly complicated or uh, in any way um, tasking to build. As you can see, I dropped down six pieces of wood and that was a base. That was enough for the base computer to tell me how to get the construction module, which I don't know where I put it. It's probably on the next base. I may have taken it with me. <laughs> This base is on the world that you spawn on, the planet that you spawn on. And the reason for that is because it's gonna be the safest place that you're gonna be able to find uh, at very beginning of the game. If you go to one of the other planets in the system, you might run into predators uh, or crazy sentinels like we did. Um, and so you just wanna be on that planet. There will be no predators. The sentinels will be low at best. On this planet, it says require obedience. Well, we hardly ever see sentinels around here. Uh, and when we do, we can just walk away from them. It's no big deal. This first base is going to have a teleporter and a biofuel reactor because uh, that's part of the Awakenings mission, the tutorial mission uh, for the game. And uh, it walks you right through it. Uh, it tells you to get a teleporter, it tells you to to power it, to put fuel in your biofuel reactor, and then it tells you to go get uh, information from the space station. Um, and so you need this very first base. It doesn't have to be fantastic, and you don't have to keep it. I always keep it because I know that this base is out on the spawn ring, and any time that I need to make a trip um, to the other side of the galaxy, this is the best place to start from. And we'll get into that on another episode when we talk about the distance and route calculator and traveling. Uh, we went over those beacons. Uh, when I was able to, I got the first, um, the first container. You also get the first container from your base computer. And uh, if we flip over to the log here and we look, it says base computer archives are ready for me. And they're online. And most of the time, the game is going to lead you back to this particular base computer. Uh, you get some lore, some story, and you also get construction blueprints that you would otherwise have to pay for uh, with very tech modules. Uh, it gave me a mining beam. It says uh, install the teleport receiver, but there's a green check mark, meaning I have already done that. It's on my ship. Let's go check out the next kind of base. We can use our teleporter to save fuel, or we can just fly up into space and call the anomaly. The next thing that you're gonna want is a source of income. And this can take a lot of different forms. At the very beginning of the game, um, you can go out and get all the very technology and uh, research farming right here on the anomaly and start right away with farming. But you're going to need to go to manufacturing facilities and learn all the blueprints. So in order to um, make some money before I have to go through all the manufacturing facilities, I try to find a storm crystal planet. An ancient bones planet will also do. Um, or uh, there's another one where you can find 
uh, buried satellites and dig them up. There's often a confrontation with sentinels involved in that, though. So what I do is I find a storm crystal planet. The first one we found was Donna Orma, and the second one we found was uh, Santoin. And uh, the reason why I drop bases on both planets is because Santoin also has predators, and uh, you need those uh, for predator missions. And Santoin turned out to be a better planet, but we'll go to Donna Orma because that was the second base. I believe that's what it's called. <laughs> I didn't name it apparently. <laughs> Again, none of these bases are required except for that very first one. Let's see. Yep, this is definitely it. Uh, we've got that first container right there. You don't have to power it. You can access it in your quick menu as long as you're nearby it. And here's the contents of that. Okay. And uh, this planet, uh, I don't think it did have predators. Uh, it had some interesting striders, though, that knocked me down off my, <laughs> knocked me off my ship. I have uh, now acquired the medium refiner from Base Computer Archives, and so that's what's here. Um, something to do while you're getting your milestone, and we'll look at milestones, for survival, which is right here, extreme survival. Because we have a base here, and we've done some work here, like working with the nutrient processor uh, and going after storm crystals, uh, we've built up some time, and we're almost at our fifth level of extreme survival. Um, so this is a good place to have a base. Uh, conversely, you can sit on a trade post or inside of a miner's settlement for hours and hours on end. Oh, my ship is parked in the miner's settlement doorway. <laughs> I could have put the teleporter up there, but I actually needed the teleporter before I built the building. Uh, so this just happens to be where it is. The nice thing about biofuel reactors is you don't have to put very much in them uh, to run them. You only need to run them for a second. And uh, you do that by reducing the amount. Unfortunately, we can only reduce the amount by 10 at a time right now. <laughs> and that goes on forever and ever. <laughs> the more uh, supplies you have, the longer it's going to take to reduce that amount. Uh, this is also the place where we built our first exocraft. And you can use the exocraft for storage. You can see there's tons of stuff in here. Uh, all this stuff is valuable, but I'm hanging on to some of it um, right now. I don't know where all the paraffinium is. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I'm hanging on to tetracobalt uh, because we might need ionized cobalt later on. So this is also where I powered up one of my shields. You can see there's a white box here. You need those white boxes to power up your defense shields. Since I've already used this call station, I don't have to continually use nav data on it. It's on my base. I've already used it. So now all I have to do is uh, call Starship, and it's not using nav data. I don't know if that's supposed to be that way, but it is that way. And so for right now, I'm going to just keep viewing it that way. I'll go back up to the anomaly here. But before I do that, your third base is, strangely enough, your freighter. And even if you don't ever build anything on your freighter, uh, it is one of your bases. And it counts as one of your bases. And um, so if you build on them uh, and they become complex, that's going to affect your base as well. Now, something strange about uh, freighters in base systems. So we have a base here. It's wherever that, that is. It's over there somewhere on the planet. While I'm within range of my home, of my planet base, 
building on my freighter base is complicated and the complexity counts. So um, if you're finding that you can't build something, um, for instance, a freighter room, um, it's actually letting me do it because the base on the planet's probably pretty small still. But if you're finding that problem, you're, you've called your freighter into the same system where your planet base is and it's not letting you build something, you just need to take your freighter somewhere else. And uh, it's simple enough, you can fly it there by putting warp fuel in, or you can fly your starship somewhere and uh, move your freighter away from that base to another star system nearby, and that'll solve that problem. So it does count. And you'll get a base limit exceeded warning if that's the problem. All right, let's go back to the anomaly. So we have the base that we're required to build and a base where there is money easily accessible like a storm crystal planet or an ancient bone planet. And I guess I'll go up these stairs over here. <laughs> now because I don't have a uh, a base that's just for fun yet um, we'll go ahead and visit one of those um, it doesn't actually matter except that I know Ash Factus will go to one of his bases the featured bases on the anomaly uh, almost all of them are built by glitch builders and these are guys that just really really know how to build bases it's an interesting place to bring us in, Ash. <laughs> I don't know how in the world we're going to get back out. <laughs> Let's go up here. That's a dead end. <laughs> nice, Ash. Can't get around in here. <laughs> Can't get over it. Can't get around it. Can't power it. Nice. <laughs> I guess we'll go to a different one. <laughs> We'll just reload back onto the anomaly. <laughs> it's a trap! <laughs> it may be that it just didn't load for me. <laughs> I'm going to be sending Ash a note after I make this video. <laughs> Try a different one. <laughs> These bases are just bases for fun. This one looks like it's out in the open. I think I can see the terminus. <laughs> There's a lot of uh, a lot of planning and um, a lot of practice that goes into building uh, glitch bases, and they're. A, creative outlet and uh, here we are inside of nice tropical planet <laughs> he's got some batteries and stuff going on there's a landing pad and we'll just turn on the lights here oh blue sky that's nice he's got himself a tower and at the top of the tower he's got this thing little lookout so that you can see this beautiful planet. Very, very pretty. It's very trop very tropical. We have a little place over here we can go. This is a, a aquarium that you can get with Quicksilver. 
And this right here, Calcash Room, is a glitch that you can get from a planet. Here's a candelabra you can get with Quicksilver. And this is another glitch, my favorite kind, capillary shells. Let's go upstairs. <laughs> it's just, just a beautiful place. He found a beautiful place and he built a base there. And that's the purpose of this base. It's just to see a beautiful place. You see the trees growing right up through it. I don't know exactly where the stairs are. <laughs> Let's go up here. Lots and lots of calc shrooms. Here's another uh, thing that you can get from the uh, Quicksilver missions. And this one too. This is really trippy. I like this. Here's a couch. <laughs> Let me just take a seat. Furniture is something that you get with uh, uh, buried technology modules for salvage data. Only way up here is to fly. It's the only way to do it. <laughs> it's a long way down. <laughs> I probably shouldn't jump the rest of the way. Oh, here's a knowledge stone. You can fix this base in your teleporter by visiting the base computer. There we go. Oh, there's going to be a storm. Notice my ship isn't here. I don't know if I can call it or not. Find out. Apparently. Now we're in a uh, system that's probably clear across the galaxy. Oh, there's a ladder there I didn't see. We'll just go up here and see if there's a space station. There is. Let's take a look at the galaxy map, see where we're at. Not far from home, actually. Pretty close to the uh, Geknip gang hub there. Uh, let's take a look here. Let's see here. Ziwu Fringe. Not far from home. Let me go to visit the space station. I'm actually surprised this place is so close to home. coming in. <laughs> I don't know how you get your base featured. Uh, I do know that you probably need to post it on Reddit. On uh, No Man's Sky Reddit. I suppose you could tweet it to Hello Games. ahead and grab a suit slot since we're here. There we go. You see by visiting a featured base, we're not on the other side of a portal, so we can actually operate. You saw me access the galaxy map. And we could teleport away. We'll change this to our bases. back at the base that I just started to build. Uh, the original reason for this base was just to, because it's a beautiful place and uh, I wanted to set up a base here. Uh, but as soon as I started to put down base pieces, 
it told me to go ahead and build the overseer station. Yeah, we'll go over here. And I think it's in here. And there's the overseer station right there. We'll put them next to a window. There we go. That actually starts the uh, the sequence expanding the base, and uh, you get all of the stuff for farming and um, uh, exocraft and all kinds of stuff. And you also get the this is the only way to get the blueprint for a microprocessor at this point. But the question is, is this base viable as a farm? And the way that we're going to find that out is by coming over to our multi-tool and installing, um, let's put this over here, installing the survey device. And I got the parts from that uh, from, from a minor settlement. So now we have the industrial survey device and there'll be a corresponding um, mission for that. Search for a power hotspot, it says. So we turn on our visor and then we tab over with one, two, or three on keyboard. And there is a power hotspot. We just gotta line it up. And we're gonna go that way. 377 units if I could go that way. Couldn't get over the landing pad. <laughs> now of course the problem is that 377 units is outside of the build zone for this. So along the way, uh, I'm gonna drop some panels here. Just something really simple. This is lower complexity. How about one of these things? It will go this way. What this does is extend the base um, the base build limit out away from the base. And I'm going to have to stop this and turn on my survey device. Make sure I'm still going the right way. I'm going to go this way. And we'll just put that out there. I'm going to string wires on this as well. I'm just going to stop every few seconds and check the survey device. Pretty close to it now. Probably put another one up on top of this hill. Alright, let's see here. We need to go back this way a few feet and right about here now I always build a floor it's not required uh, but I always put uh, my stuff down on a floor and you see that completed the mission for the industrial survey device. Okay. And I doubt that I have the wherewithal to build this, but we'll see. Uh, nope, I need the chromatic metal. Uh, so we can delete this one. But we've extended the base uh, pretty far away from where the base is. The base computer radius is about 350 units. So you may need to extend your base to utilize those things. And I'll straighten out these poles too. Or you can leave them that way. It's kind of cool. <laughs> but by doing this, by finding power, um, I'm now free to build a farm. And building a farm is just, it's just a way to create a steady, stable income um, once you have the blueprints to use the plants from the farm. 
And before I started this, I was about to drop down containers right here. But I didn't have magnetized ferrite, so. so I'm gonna do it this way. Kind of hard to snap together now. A little bit tricky. Come on. <laughs> does not want to snap together. That is so strange. Let's see if we can get this one to snap. Normally they do snap to each other, but for some reason it just doesn't want to do it. There we go. <laughs> So if this is going to be the base uh, where you do expanding the base, where you build a farm, um, where you enjoy yourself, run around, a beautiful place to hang out. Now if you want to do uh, mining and stuff like that, uh, after you find the first hot spot that's presented to you, uh, then you are going to try to find the next one. And either one of them may be around, so we'll just take a look. Let's see what's available out here. Gotta get up these hills, though. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going, so there's no point in extending the base yet. But I'm going to get out here a little ways, and then turn on my survey device and see if either one of those things comes up. There we go. We have a mining deposit, deep level mineral deposit. It's a B, and it's straight ahead, 362 units. We'll go see what it is. I'm gonna guess that it's paraffinium because we're on a lush planet. All this star bulb right here, it's awesome. It takes a lot of product to make uh, recipes so just farming them in the wild is doable but it's very very involved let's go this way a little bit there we go and now we'll know what it is It's copper, actually, which is awesome. So we found a copper, uh, B-class copper deposit. And uh, rather than marking that signal, uh, it's better to actually mark it with a um, beacon. Because the beacon's gonna stay, the signal is not. And again, this is, you're gonna wanna pick a particular color for this. And let's see here. Oh, where are we at? We're past red. We've done brown. So let's do uh, green, I guess. So green beacons are deposits. Things that you want to find. Now we'll go back towards the base. We would have to extend the base in order to use that copper deposit. Because we have to power it. So we'll have to extend the power out there. And I'm going sort of off to one side, away from both the power uh, and the uh, mineral deposit. And let's see how far we are. Uh, 336 units. So we'll turn on our survey device and see if we can find an oxygen deposit. Probably oxygen, it's a C-class deposit. So let's go this way. And look out for these funny animals. Now these deposits are all over the planet and um, oh, I knew that was gonna happen. <laughs> let's go back this way. 
Seems like it wants me to go right past that thing again. Let's get rid of it. <laughs> there we go. Let's see what we got here for a gas deposit. There we go. And we have oxygen. All right, very cool. So we have uh, oxygen, which turns to carbon, and also uh, in a medium or large refiner amplifies almost everything. <coughs> Excuse me. Over there we have um, the uh, copper deposit. So we'll always have copper if we need that. That's pretty cool. And so if you wanted to set up a really complex uh, farm here, you can grow all the plants on your base. Uh, you can get all the copper you need. And right here, you can get all the oxygen you need. There's other deposits on this planet. There will also be paraffinium. And uh, I can't remember right now if, if it's uh, nitrogen. I think it is. That might be frozen planets. I don't know. Uh, but there will be another kind of gas other than oxygen as well. And so that is another reason to have a farm is to make money and to supply yourself with the goods that you need uh, to expand your character. Can you do this without bases? Absolutely. You can play this game without bases. Keeping in mind that you do have to build that very first base, it's required by the tutorial. It's the only way to get a hyperdrive. Of course, you don't have to build that hyperdrive. You just need the blueprint for it. And then you can go buy a ship, and any ship after that will have a hyperdrive hyper installed. So that is our reason for that. I, um, I built the Nomad because I had to have the blueprint in order to uh, build a call station, which is up there. If I delete that call station, I'll have all the necessary goods uh, on me to build a call station. But let's just see. I don't think I can build another one, but uh, it might tell me the recipe for it. Oops. Um, yeah, I need four ion batteries I don't have on me. So, uh, do I have any in storage? Now that I have the first four storage modules, I can look and see what I have there. There they are, right there. And we'll put those away. And then we'll put those away. And let's see here. Anything else I want to carry? Some salvage data. You can also drop a base just for the purpose of accessing a container. If you keep everything in your very first container, all of your emergency supplies, like oxygen and ferrite uh, and carbon and things like that, and you carry 30 chromatic metal on you all the time and uh, the magnetized ferrite to drop a container. You can drop a container on any planet uh, by simply dropping a base computer, build the container, get what you need out of it, delete the container, and delete the base computer. and uh, Or rather, hit the button on the base computer to delete the base. Don't delete the base computer. Hit this button and then you always have access to those emergency supplies in that one container. But once you have a freighter, uh, you should be able to get to your freighter because every planet has dihydrogen and ferrite. And so you can always build a launch uh, fuel. Right. Um, so yeah, I think that covers it. Uh, building, because uh, it's required by the mission, building for money, uh, building for farming, and building for fun. and. Uh, any reason that you might have. Uh, I have some saves that have 25 bases and I have some saves that have two bases and that's it. But I do recommend you keep that very first base on your home world um, always. And because it's such a low complexity base, it's probably never going to affect your ability to build anywhere else. All right, that's everything. I wanna thank you all so much for coming along. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, Please put them in the comments below, and uh, anyone else want to chime in and add any uh, kinds of bases or information to that, please put that in the comments below. Uh, have a great day.